Hi there and welcome to a quick video on how to get started with ProofHub. ProofHub is a work management and team collaboration tool that can cater to the needs of teams of all sizes and industries. Starting from the very first screen, MeView is where you can find a list of all the projects that are currently assigned to you as a user. Simply click on a project name to jump into any section of the project. Let's quickly jump into the very first tab. Now in ProofHub, any project that you create, you get all these tabs to manage the data in the project. You can also enable or disable a tab based on your requirement. The overview section gives you a quick overview of your project. Here you can see all the overdue, due today, upcoming tasks, events and milestones for the project. You can also see the time logged by different people while working on the project. In addition to this, you also get an activities tab here where you can see all the activities done by different project members on the project. We are now in the discussion section of the project. Project discussions help you to keep your project specific communication in one place. Now here you can add any number of discussion topics. As you can see on the left side, I have added four discussion topics right here. To add a new discussion, simply click on the add option on the top left corner of the screen. And from here, you can simply add a few details and your topic will be added. Let's start by adding a discussion title. And here you can add some description and select a few users who will be part of this discussion with you. Now subscribing a person to a discussion will mean that they will be notified whenever a comment is added right here. So let's click on the add option. And here our discussion topic has been added. Now to add comments, simply click on the write a comment option. And from here you can add a comment and also mention people while adding those comments. And let's click on the add option and the comment has been added now all the people subscribed to the discussion will be immediately notified that a comment has been added here or if you want you can also share files and documents right here tasks help you to easily manage the work allocation within projects let me show you some basics of managing tasks in proof hub a project can be further divided into task lists and each task list can have its own set of tasks. Here I have added four task lists. You can also add another list by clicking on the add option and select list. Now once a list is added, it will appear on the left panel. You can now start by adding and assigning tasks. The tasks added here can be viewed in three different views, the board view, the table view and the Gantt view. We are currently in the board view. Let's start by adding a task. Let's also assign the task to a project member. Now once a user starts working on a task, they can easily move it from one stage to the next as it progresses. And once the task is moved to the last stage, it will be marked as completed. Click on a task to view it in the task detail window. Here you can also get other options to manage the task details. You can also add additional fields to store more data. Let's quickly jump to the table view. The same tasks are available to be managed in the form of rows and columns. Scroll to the right to view all the columns and click on the plus icon to add more. There are multiple filter options available on top to manage or filter the tasks based on your requirement. Gantt charts help you to easily plan your projects, modify schedules and visualize tasks. Here you can add task lists, tasks and based on their start and end dates, view them in a timeline format. To add a new task, simply click on the add option on the top left corner of your screen. Now I've already added a few task lists right here. Let's uh, expand one of them. 
and here. So these are the tasks from under this list. Now let's start by adding a few dates for these tasks. So I'm just going to select a few dates from right here. And let's select a date for this one as well. Now, as you can see, based on the start and end dates we select for the task, you can see them in a timeline view on the right side. You can also set up dependencies between these tasks by simply dragging and dropping them from one end to the other. Let's set up a few more dates and dependencies. So just give me one moment. And here. So let's set up a dependency between these two tasks and let's do it for these two as well. Right. So now once we have set up the dependencies, if in case one task is delayed by a few days, let's uh, delay this task forward. You can see that it will automatically adjust the dates for all the dependent tasks. Now to view a task in the task detail window, simply right click and select the view task option. Plus there are multiple task options available here. You can also apply different constraints to manage how the task dependencies will work. On top, you get multiple options to manage the view of your Gantt chart. For example, you can zoom into your Gantt chart. You can also zoom out of it. The project managers can also set up a baseline for the project from right here. So if I click on this option and click on yes. Now a baseline has been set up, which means the actual or the current start and end dates of the tasks are recorded. Now, if I click on this option, it will show me the current start and end dates and the actual start and end dates. Now, for example, if this task is moved forward. Now, as you can see, it shows you the current and the actual start dates on this one single screen. Now, clicking on the context menu on the top right corner of the screen will give you the option to collapse or expand your Gantt chart or download it in a PDF format. Calendars help you to schedule and organize your project meetings and targets. Simply click on a day to add a new event, milestone or a task for the project. Now let's start by adding a new event. So I'm going to click on a date here and let's select the event option. Now in the add event window, we'll have to start by adding a title for the event and uh, you can also add some description. Select a few attendees for the event. So I'm going to select a few users here. You can also choose if you want this to be an all day event or if you want it to have a start time and an end time for the day. You can also create recurring events for your projects. From here, you can choose to create a daily, weekly, monthly or an yearly recurring event. So let's say in this case, we want to create a weekly recurring event. We'll select a few options. So let's say we want this to start from next Monday, reoccur every Monday until the end of August and click on apply. And right here, you can see the event has been created. You can also set up reminders for the events so that all the attendees are notified through an email 15 or 30 minutes before the event begins. Let's click on add and here the event has been created for all the upcoming Mondays. Let's move on to the milestones. Milestones are like targets you can create for your project in the calendar view. To create a milestone, simply click on a date and select the milestone option. Now let's start by adding a title, some description, select a few assignees and here you can also set up a reminder on the milestone. Now one of the very specific features of a milestone is that you can associate it with a task list. So from here we can associate it with an existing task list and let's click on add. Now the milestone has been added for the project and all the assignees will be notified if it is not completed by the selected date. Similarly, you can also add tasks from the calendar view. On the top right corner of the screen, multiple filter options are available. Click on the context menu to subscribe your proof of calendar with your Google Calendar or iCal. 
you can also download it in PDF or CSV format. Notes help you to save any project related data in one place. With Notes, you get a place to store any meeting minutes, project or client guidelines, or any other critical project details and access them quickly whenever needed. Here you can add any number of notebooks and each notebook can have any number of notes added to them. Here I have already added two notebooks. Let's start by adding a new note. Let's click on the plus icon and let's add a title here. Select a few subscribers and click on add. Now you can simply start by adding information here and project members can view and refer to the notes at any time. To edit a note, check the edit option on the top right corner. These notes can be marked as private to restrict the access to limited project members. They can also be downloaded from here in a PDF format. File management is a key aspect of project management. With Proofa, you get a dedicated space in each project to add and manage files. Plus, any file attached anywhere in this project can also be easily accessed from right here. Here you can add and store files and documents in one single space and share them with your teams and clients. Here we will discuss how you can add files, manage them using folders and subfolders, file proofing and versioning, and sharing files with external clients. Let's start by understanding the basic structure of the file section in a project. On the left side are the folders and subfolders and on the right are all the files. You can easily add a new folder by clicking on the Add option and select Folder. Add a folder name and here the folder has been created. Similarly, you can also add a subfolder under this folder. Now let's start by adding a file to the project. Let's click on the Add option and let's select the Upload Files option. Now in the Upload Files window, you can either drag and drop the file or upload a file using all these applications. Let's upload a file from my computer. Now I'm going to select one file, but you can also select multiple files to be uploaded from right here. Let's click on Open and as you can see, the file has been added right here. Now let's select a few users to be notified and let's also select a folder in which I wish to place this file. Let's click on OK and the file has been uploaded into the selected folder. Once a file has been uploaded, you can simply click on the file to open it in a file proofing window. File proofing is available for both image and PDF files. Now here you and your clients can easily collaborate by marking any changes using the different annotation options available here. Plus, you can also add comments corresponding to the different annotations. You can also mention users while adding these comments. The mentioned person will receive an email notification. You can also access all the pages of a single file from right here. Plus, there is an approve option available on top using which project members can approve the files. Now, in addition to this, multiple versions of a single file can be managed by using the upload new version and version history option from right here. Select multiple files to download, move or delete them in one go. A single file's information can be viewed by selecting the file and clicking on the information icon on the top right corner. An image or PDF file uploaded in Proofa can also be shared for reviews and approvals with external users. Use the copy link option to share the file's downloading or proofing link with external users. Using this link, the external users will be able to access the file in the file proofing window. For easy accessibility, there are multiple filter options available to easily filter and sort your files. With multiple teams working on multiple tasks, it becomes difficult to manually keep track of time spent by each individual user. 
Here you can create timesheets, set estimated hours, track time spent on tasks, compare the estimated time to the actual time logged, and export the time entries for easy billing of clients. Now let me show you how time tracking works in ProofHub. You can either use a timer or make a manual time entry. Time entries are made on the tasks and saved in this section. Now we'll begin by creating a timesheet. So let's click on the Add Timesheet option right here. And let's give a name to the timesheet. Let's click on Add and here the timesheet has been added. Now any time entry made in this project will be saved right here into this particular timesheet. You can also make multiple timesheets to segregate the time entries in the project. Now I'll make a time entry on a task. For that let's jump into the task section of the project and let's open a task. Now right here you get the add log time option. Click on it. And here you get the option to choose a timer or you can track time manually. Now let's choose the timer option. Now as you can see a timer has started on top of your task. You can also close the task and you can see the timer is still running for me on top. I can click on the timer to see all the active timers. I can pause a timer at any time and start a different timer for a different task. Now the next step is to save the time entry. For that I can click on save time from right here or I can go back into the task. So let's open the same task and right here you can see the timer is still running for me right here on top. So I'll click on this option and click on save time. Now in the add time window, I can select a timesheet in which the time entry will be saved. You can add some description. Select the status of the time entry. So let's select non-billable for now and manage the task details from right here. Click on add and that's it. The time entry has been stored. This way you can make multiple time entries and compare it with the estimated time for the task. You also get multiple other options to manage the time entries in the time section of the project. For example, you can filter out your time entries based on the filters available on top. You can also export the time entries into CSV format or into QuickBooks or FreshBooks. Hope this video was helpful. Do let us know if you have any questions and we will be happy to help.